Hi guys and welcome back to the Hot Topic Tent. It's been great having you all join us. Um, I'd just like to quickly introduce what we're going to be talking about now and it's AHDB and here's a quick video about hospitality action before we go into it. Holly Hoyle, Catering Manager. Peter Molar, Dorman. Ricardo Oliva, Concierge. Ulrich Edwards, Concierge Assistant. We've got you. Linda Anderson, cafe owner. You are your you, junior sous chef. Nun Pinto, bartender. Mark Black, head porter. Andrea Demir, receptionist. We've got you. Aaron Dixon, apprentice chef. Federica Pinna, pastry chef. Sabino Mazzone, pastry chef. Kimiri Bochkei, barista supervisor. We've got you. Sean Maharjan, sushi head chef. Mitchell Collier, duty manager. Anna Grabczewska, public area cleaner. Whatever you do in hospitality, isn't it good to know that someone's got your back in case anything goes wrong? Joining me now is Carl from AHDB. You all right, Carl? Two seconds, mate. I've lost you. Can you hear us, mate? Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm very well. Yourself? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Good, good, good. So, do you want to just explain a little bit about AHDB and what you stand for, etc.? Yeah, that's great. Thanks for inviting us into uh, Northern Food Festival. It's great to be able to talk to people and and then what uh, we actually do for our farming community and, and the industry as a whole. Um, so who we are, so AHDB are um, Agricultural and Horticultural Development Board. Uh, some people may know us as uh, EBLEC, some people may know us as the MLC, but it's an amalgamation through the years into uh, Agricultural and Horticultural Development Board. Uh, we look after six sectors of the actual agricultural and horticultural industry, uh, which is uh, red meat sectors, beef, lamb, pork, uh, dairy, potatoes, watercress, and horticultural crops and ornamentals. Uh, my particular background is the red meat sector, which is probably where most of the focus will be today. Um, but actually, we look after all those in varying levels. If we could just go on one tone, please. A lot of the chefs involved this weekend have been heavily involved with yourself, with the AHDB, haven't they? Yeah, yes. And, you know, it, we're really coming together as an entire industry now, showing the passion between farmers, butchers and chefs, uh, and actually bringing it to life so that everybody's got their part to play to deliver quality right the way through to the guest in the restaurant or the consumer in the home. Uh, if any one of those parts fails, actually, the, the product at the end fails and falls down. Yeah, it's making sure it's all good on the dish for the customer at the end point, isn't it? Definitely. Definitely. The customer is always king. Sometimes not right, but always king. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> if we just go on one slide, please. So, part of who we are is we're actually split up into several um, areas within AHDB for every one of the sectors that we've just gone to. So, we have a real technical uh, focus, uh, which belongs to the farmers. Um, a, a knowledge exchange team which work with farmers and a select group of farmers that then interact with further farmers uh, to get our messaging out. Uh, we have a market intelligence team which work at farm gate level, uh, processing level and, and actually from the last 18 months we've been working at uh, restaurant level uh, and, and trying to understand what drives restaurants and actually what makes uh, a menu the actual build-up of the, of the produce that's on the menu and make it worth that actual value at the end for the consumer. And we have a market development team, which is where I particularly sit in my role, which is looking after quality of uh, beef and lamb, both as uh, a national enterprise and as a southwest, a West Country PGI. And we have an export market, which opens markets up right around the globe. Um, which is based around when you see the reports in the papers of um, China has opened up a £250 million um, market for British beef. That's part of our team that do that alongside government officials to make that happen and, 
and facilitate all the vi visits on each side of the water to, to open those markets up. Uh, if we could just go on one, Sean, please. So what are we doing right now uh, in the UK market? Well, <laughs> as hospitality is closed at present and, and most of it's sort of trying to wake up slightly, what happened is, is that uh, consumers went on um, a real rampage to fill the fridges. And why wouldn't we all do that? I'm sure that we've all done it to a certain degree. But it really left the quality element of the animals behind. So we were buying mints and dice and, and four quarter cuts uh, and not really focusing on what we would do when we were eating out. So I think what's really important now and where the chefs are involved is that we, we've got a team of chefs out uh, putting uh, small videos up, photographs, actually trying to make um, it appetizing and easy to cook at home steaks. So we came up with the two hashtags of make it steak, hashtag steak night. Um, and it was trying to recreate what they were having out, uh, brought to the home. Uh, there's a huge social media presence. The chefs have put out close on 1,500 tweets between the 10 that are out there now. Uh, and we hope that that continues. But what's really impressive is, is that those tweets, along with a few others that are out there, have generated around 13 million hits. Um, which is a huge format for any sort of a campaign. And we can actually see that the farm gate and the animal utilisation is actually coming back through the marketplace again. So, so it's working phenomenally well. And I really thank Jeff because at a time when well, it was actually the last thing that I think I'd want to do is get out there and cook and not what actually these guys are really skills actually bringing it to the consumer uh, and making it appetising and inspirational so that they can... Uh, and, and, and enjoy those steaks. What we'd encourage those people to do now is actually post your pictures of your steaks. You've had a few people practicing that, go and buy some steaks, uh, really post the pictures and use the hashtag so that we can actually see them, pick them up and, and start spreading them around to encourage more people. Yeah, definitely. If we could just go on one. Um, <laughs> what's really interesting though is, is that in the pork sector, Actually, the opposite happened, and the loins and the back end of the animal actually just carried on selling as though there was nothing going wrong, uh, partly because bacon's fairly well supported right the way through the industry. It's supported very well in the home, but the actual forequarter of the animal, the shoulder, the, 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 the uh, cuts that really slow down and take slow cooking and some time uh, just stopped. So we've got a surplus of those. So we've come up with these ideas of perfect pork and you probably we've got three or four chefs out and about in fact uh darren creed who was on yesterday john fell uh, a guy called alan Patton, just uh early uh down into the side of london they're hosting the perfect pulled pork campaign for us and well what a reception those guys are having and making it look so easy to actually put this in the oven or the slow cooker in the morning bring it out three, four o'clock, have it out there, and that's a great evening meal. But then for the next two days, they're actually posting out what you can do with the remainder of that joint, because it's not just the one meal. Longer. Actually, there's lots and lots of things that happen with that joint going on. We're actually encouraging people again and consumers and home cooks to actually post the pictures, let's see what they've done with those, and encourage others to actually utilise that and Bring the slow cooker out. There's nothing wrong with the slow cooker. People just have a fear of it. Let's try and use it to make it great and, and really bring it back into fashion. But post the pictures with the hashtag of perfect pulled pork. Yeah, it's been absolutely amazing. I've seen it come up a, a little while back and I had actually recently done a pulled pork myself. I was using the essential green barbecue rub on it and it came yeah. out really nice. Yeah, anyway, it's surprising what I mean. You're a chef, Sean, you know, it'll come out, it's be absolutely wonderful. You know, but I think if we can encourage uh, consumers, if we can encourage home cooks to actually utilise this, and then those leftovers, you know, when you get a joint, one, one to two kilos, actually, you know, that's plenty there for sort of two meals from an average family size. Why not make it into a pizza topping for the following day? Why not actually um, just use it as a, a burger topping, perhaps, you know, and really utilise it to its full 
Like Darren's just said, he put it onto a top of a pizza the next day. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And if we could just one, one more, please. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> well, uh, th this is a real um, story of milk your moments. Um, you know, the dairy sector is split into very challenging arenas, and, and there are some farms that really only supply hospitality. So when the coffee houses closed, they had no sales whatsoever, and we probably all saw it on the news where there was actually some farms that were looking like they were throwing milk away, and and actually it wasn't going anywhere. So we really need to stimulate this uh, this particular market pretty quickly to try and uh, move some milk because we're coming into the springtime. Uh, the grass is sweet. It's got a lot more sugars in there. It brings more milk out into the cows. So actually the milk production building has consumptions gone down, which is a real catastrophe in that sector. What we'd really like on this is for people to get together, do a little Zoom party, even if it's with... Uh, uh, a cup of tea with the neighbour at social distancing over the fence, take um, uh, take a, a snapshot of it, post it with uh, Milk Your Moment, and actually it will pop up on the website right across all social media. And we're really trying to encourage people to do that and perhaps just have one or two more cups of tea, and that will make a huge difference to the consumption of milk right across the uh, industry. It's really important that we try and move, make that start moving uh, and really try and engage people with it. You know, and even if you've got, so even if you're a lecturer and you've got uh, a, um, a class full of uh, students, why not do a protein shake? Why not try and get a milkshake, a strawberry shake, whatever comes with it, and really try and make it move and, and post those up there. Uh, two sex uh, Darren's just asked, is it moment or moments? Uh, either will do, Darren. You know, we, we've amended it because at the beginning it was just moment. Now it's moments and moments so that we can pick up both um, actual activity, but we're not going to leave one behind then. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, if we just move on one. We've actually just had a competition put up um, at the college around Milk the Moment to support the dairy side as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I think working with colleges and chefs, you know, what um, we're really just becoming known within the um, service sector uh, for all that AHDB and EVLEX and MLC have been in operation for sort of 30 plus years. Uh, really getting into what we would call modern hospitality uh, because we haven't really got any of the chefing skills and, and that sort of arena. We come to it from a purely technical perspective. It's been fairly difficult. So actually linking with uh, Mary Chapman at Passion to Inspire, we're starting to work with the Craft Guild of Chefs. And then we've got these chefs around the country, the, these trusted chefs such as Darren, Adam Lestrell, Rob Kennedy, Chris Wheeler. Uh, Chris Wheeler is our ambassador chef for the quality standard mark uh, for beef and quality standard mark for lamb. Um, they're really introducing us to lots of chefs and really trying to get us integrated so that we can start to put our network and our um, information services out and, and utilised by the people that it can really help. Um, we have a meat education programme completely free to use. There are 22 modules in there, but there's only about 20 that will be accessible to non, uh, what we call non knife skill people. Um, but they would go from point of uh, process all the way through to front of house, so there's something in there for everyone. Uh, and in fact, some of the colleges and some of the lecturers have been doing these courses, and uh, each one with its own certificate. Uh, you just log in online uh, with your email address, and everything comes through. It takes about two and a half hours to do a module, which is about a two hour learning pack, and then there's about 30 to 40 uh, multiple, multiple choice questions. Uh, once you've hit uh, a 70% uh, threshold, the certificate will be issued. But actually, what's really important is, is that we take you back into the course, show you what you've got wrong, because actually to get your certificate, you might get that on your first date, but get four questions wrong. Actually, if we can give you the right answer, at least you've learned something and not just gone away, just well, I've got a certificate. So you need to go back and look at what's wrong, and then the certificate's um, issued. 
the feedback from the colleges and academies that have joined in with this has been absolutely fantastic. And um, when we went into the uh, coronavirus systems and the coronavirus lockdown, we had approximately um, about uh, 17,000 people had actually accessed uh, the course. We'd issued approximately 1,700, 1,800 certificates. And um, through the um, coronavirus and the lockdown, with the chefs and colleges coming on board, we nearly doubled that actual um, uh, certificate issue. So the, the colleges and the chefs have really enjoyed it, and the feedback is absolutely fantastic. How can other colleges get involved with it? Literally, all they need to do is the link's just on the screen there. Go into the link, even if they just uh, tap into a Google search, AHDB Meat Education Programme, it will take them exactly to the right landing page on our pages. Um, just scroll down until they get to the Meat Education, enter an email, and they can be aware. Uh, wow, that's great. Uh, and it goes right away from very basic, so at the front of house, people can come in uh, into the equation. It's split into three or it's split into four or five departments. So there's a, an area for process, an area for butchery, restaurants, uh, others, and front of house. And, and everybody's welcome to come in. If they need more uh, information, they're welcome to get in touch with me or one of my colleagues at Butchers Kits dot at ahdb.org.uk. So that's butchers, plural, kit, singular, at ahdb.org.uk. That's lovely, definitely. If we could just go on one, uh, Sean, please. Uh, we also um, created a meat purchasing guide. Uh, this was always intended to be used in retail uh, with uh, butchers talking to actual people, wholesalers. Um, but we quickly realised that actually they were quite good at talking to each other and the problem was more uh, butchers understanding what consumers wanted or what chefs wanted. Um, so we created this book, which is uh, a, meat, a meat purchasing guide. Uh, in the guide, there's around 800 cuts, which covers uh, all the main beef, lamb and pork, plus some uh, and some veal cuts that are in there. Um, actually, in the book itself is just the actual cuts. But there's, if you use it online, there's actually a link in there to actually show how you get the cut out of the actual carcass, uh, how you take it step by step. It's be a real boon for any any chef and. And actually, it just shows that they use the same language as the butcher that they're using, and they're going to get the right uh, ingredient in that they want to put in the dish. Um, we have an app that goes with that. You need to be on Wi-Fi to download it, because that is one huge app. Uh, it's free. Everything we've talked about today is completely free. There's no in-app purchases. Uh, the little logo is on the screen when you look in, uh, in the uh, App Store or the Google Store. Um, download it. What you'll find on there is, is all the cuts that mirror the book, but actually it shows cooking suggestions, not necessarily recipes, but cooking suggestions of how to cook it, and then you can decide on what you want to do with it from there. For chefs, it will not be definitive. For the consumer, it's a really good starting point. Um, we, uh, we, we're continually working on it. We're continually trying to make it. There is a link in there that takes you directly to the back page uh, of the cut you're looking for so that you can actually see how that comes out of the carcass as well. And that can be found at the link that's on the screen, which is ahdb.org.uk forward slash mpg. Uh, we're, pretty, we're very proud of that and very proud of the Meat Education Programme. It's, uh, uh, two amazing uh, pieces of work that we continually uh, improve upon uh, and we're continually trying to get that out and out into more arenas. Butchers are very good at using it now. Uh, we'd really like chefs to start to come into there and even home cooks with the app to try and just get the right cuts for the dishes that they're uh, trying to create. Would you recommend people trying to stay away from supermarket meat all the time then? Not at all. No, yeah, I think every uh, meat's got uh, its place. Uh, we do lots of work with uh, supermarkets, 
I think that uh, supermarket meat is about picking what you pick off the shelf and, and really utilising it. And particularly when you're going into the supermarket and they've got a butchery counter, go and talk to the guys on the counters and, and ask them what their advice will be. Try and uh, bring their knowledge to you. Uh, I think that supermarkets are a bad deal um, out of the publicity that comes on. And you know, when you look at everything that's mass produced, there will be a slip down in a system somewhere. You know, no matter what that system is, there will always be something that goes wrong. It's always that that hits the headlines rather than all, always the good that comes onto it. Uh, when you look at the amount of animals that are processed for the whole as a, for the country as a whole, uh, they're all processed through the same processes. They're all raised on the same farms. It's just how it's treated as it comes through that system. So actually, when you go into a butcher or you've got a catering butcher delivering to a specialist restaurant and they're advertising that this is dry edge beef or it's been hung for 35 days, actually, that's going to have a slightly different flavour profile to the, to the product that you pick up off the shelf. But it's all originated from the same sort of process. You know, the way that we've developed processes now is actually very good. Uh, UK beef, British beef, Scotch beef, Welsh beef, it's all excellent quality. You know, we should be able to produce that and we should be able to get quality beef out of all retails, including the high street butchers. The high street butchers are so passionate about what they put out there for consumers. Yeah. We just had a great little thing come through from Field and Forage who are joining with me later on about everything about beef, basically. Yeah. You know, I think that we need to utilise the whole carcass, but we can't not... You know, if we're only going to utilise part of the carcass, we're failing the farmer. You know, when you look at the passion that's on farm, when you look at the passion that's in the butchery, the passion that's in the pan, you know, the farmer raises an animal from anything up to 24 months through to about 36 months to get that prime beef. A butcher has round about 40, 45 days maximum. Usually that 21-ish days is where they start selling it out. And then a chef has, well, if we're talking about a prime steak, you know, he's probably got six, seven minutes in the pan. Uh, but the skill level and the passion in that six or seven minutes really delivers to the plate. You know, and so when we talk about chef, but farmer, butcher, chef, it's a real partnership and we shouldn't be seeing things in isolation. We should be utilising everything that comes out of every part. We should be seen as one, really, together, shouldn't we, all three? Correct. And what's a real shame is is that we don't actually take the consumer on that journey like we should do to actually encourage them to do more and more with it because we try and keep that knowledge uh, between ourselves. We should be proud to share it, just like the chefs are doing those on the internet now. Uh, on the social media for me with the uh, make it uh, in the perfect pulled pork. You know, that's really showcasing what you guys do and how people can get involved with it on a home level yeah. when hospitality starts to open and starts to come back in. Actually, what we can do then is, is, is that we can encourage these guys to come back to you and utilise the whole carcass and actually make delicious food so simply. Well, that's massively with it, utilising the full carcasses of things, because at a minute, people just stick with the same old, same old, and we forget about the cuts that are absolutely amazing, but might take a lot longer to cook. Yeah. yeah you know, you know when, uh, if we go back just a short time, the average in home cook would have been 55 minutes to an hour for an evening meal. Uh, just at present, we're hitting somewhere between 25 and 35 minutes from into the uh, prep and uh, onto the table. Well, everything's going to be then either thinner, uh, faster cooking, pre-prepped. There's only so much that you can actually make for people to actually make it really swift. What I think lockdown's done is that it's actually brought people back to more scratch cooking uh, and actually... Um, actually just wanting to do it, actually sharing that time with the family and actually enjoying cooking that meal together so that they sit down and have that time. Uh, One of my favourites to actually cook, especially beef and uh, pork, is the cheek. Yeah. So flavourful. You need that really long cook-over that just to uh, get that uh, 
nice intense day, so juicy. Um, that just combined with a bit of feather blade and, and make that into some really nice, um, some really nice uh, lasagnas or uh, nice dice into uh, steak pies or even just make it in advance and refreeze it so that you can take that out, cut it into little roundels and actually just on the barbecue to get that little bit of a smoke. To it. I, I, I used to do things like that and brisket, braise them off, reform it into a, a boudon. Uh, in click film, let it set in my fridge, and then I'd do a bourguignon sauce with it and reheat it in the bourguignon sauce without the meat in it. Very nice, yeah. Um, I remember a chef from the West Country when, when we started doing our off films, we've done two series of those now with chefs around the country. We've created about 40 films, 45 films, which can be seen either on our um, uh, Facebook page, which is QSM, uh, beef and lamb off the block or on our YouTube channel, which is the QSM uh, YouTube channel. Um, use chefs from the pub arena right the way through to Michelin star. But one that really stands out for me is a, is a chef called Desterlin down the uh, West Country. And he did one that was called Tongue in Cheek. And he did a, uh, an ox cheek uh, with a uh, rump and uh, some tongue uh, fritters that sat between it. And that was just magnificent. <laughs> like I've just seen some great pictures come through from uh, Milk the Moments. Someone's just been sending me these through as we've been going on. Some loads of different bits and pieces yeah. sent through by Darren there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Loughborough College and massive supporters. Uh, everything that we do, they want to be involved with. They really see a benefit from utilising the information that we've got. Uh, and actually, not just about the catering uh, college, you know, the catering sector of that, but actually the business sector have got involved because they can see that there's a necessity to look at how we utilise food and how we actually market that through the system so that we get the best for the restaurant, the butcher, and back to the farm level as well. It's very important that we look after the farms because we need those to provide future food right the way through the system for us to continue with. Yeah, massively. You got another one? Can't remember. No, that's me. That's a slide, yeah. yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, a little bit more about AHDB and how other people can get involved with it then. Yeah, so, realistically speaking, uh, use the website. You know, just at this time, we've got one of the biggest uh, coronavirus sections on there, which covers everything that you need to know, really, about work and and working in the agricultural system. Actually on that site, there's a link to uh, Pickle Britain on there as well. So if people are looking for some work during this time, actually they can utilize that link to get through there. Um, but really, what I'd really like is, is with the colleges, uh, the chefs, uh, the catering butchers, is to really work very closely with them so that we can start to get our knowledge out, particularly from the market intelligence section. You know, we've barely scratched the surface on that. and. The market intelligence section, really, we buy uh, data from all sorts of sources, mash it all together and make sense of it to put it back out so that menus can be brought up and, and really utilise the, the beef, the lamb, the pork, the dairy, whatever we're actually looking at at the particular time uh, and make the most of it on the menus and suggest words to use on the menu to make it worth the actual value to the consumer so that they understand you know, provenance is a very important factor to consumers and I think that will grow more and more as we start to come back and start to utilise restaurants, cafes, coffee houses and we need to understand where food's from, what the security of the food is and actually um, how it's been produced. So I think that uh, that's how people can actually come to us. We've got a recipe site uh, for pork which is called Love Pork we have a recipe site for potatoes, which is love potatoes, and we have simply beef and lamb for um, the beef and lamb sectors. Uh, when you put those three together, we have roughly a thousand, a thousand two hundred um, recipes on there for all levels, from the way of making a steak sandwich all the way through to very complicated and, and step by step guides as well to produce that food. Uh, we have our own in-house uh, home economist, Denise, who uh, works tirelessly on those recipes and brings that together with some phenomenal photography so that people can actually do that at home. So 
Uh, if you uh, visit the site, simplybeefandlamb.co.uk, please sign into the newsletter. It comes probably about every six weeks with some super tips on there, but also what's coming into fashion, what to look forward to in the coming seasons. Uh, and I think that you'll find it quite inspirational. I, I've learned a lot more about for, like from farm to the actual consumer recently since working at the new wedding venue I work at. In I started there in the August. And we have our own lambs reared on site. And then we've got our own family butchers, which is literally 100 yards down the road, which has been going 100 years. And then the lamb comes back to me at the farm to serve for the weddings. So it's a great little circle of a relationship together. Fantastic. And the food miles is next to nothing, Sean. Yeah, massively. It's probably, it travels all of like 200 yards. Yeah. You know, you, you look at the way that that's produced and, and you've got the whole story to tell the people for their special day when they come into the wedding. Um, what could be better than having all that on your doorstep and really portraying that as a message right the way through the whole day for them? Yeah, it probably does more walking in an hour than it does uh, when it goes to actually come to me. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's what it's all about, about food miles and things like that. I think that's a big importance of a lot of things nowadays. Yeah, I think the um, you know, sustainability is a really big word and you know we need to be careful about how we use that word and what we actually mean by that word. Uh, that we all mean the same thing and how we actually calculate it so as the sustainability element really has an impact and, and not a negativity. You know, we've got to really portray everything coming forward that you've got that link. I think the relationships between the farmer and the chef, the relationship between the farmer, the butcher and the chef is very, very important. You know, we've, for far too long, we've sort of put a real importance between butcher and chef, but we need to build that whole picture, and particularly for future generations of chefs coming through, that we need to try and build that picture so that they've got an image to sell to the consumer coming through the door. Yeah, massively. Very much so. So if anyone would like to get involved, just head over to the website to get involved with it. And it's been lovely having everyone involved in today. Thanks very much, Carl, for joining up joining us today. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. And I'll see you shortly. Thanks very much. Thank you.